Hi there everyone, welcome to my new YouTube channel here. Uh, on this YouTube channel we will cover some um, system administration uh, tips and tricks, you know, um, stuff that I find in my day-to-day -day job which I find might be useful to someone else out there. So in today's case what I have here is a FortiGate firewall and this is used as a VPN server. Um, so your organization might have a FortiGate firewall that your, your users dial into. Um, especially during COVID-19 outbreak. Um, dial into the VPN so they can access your internal network, access their servers and their files and things like that. So this tutorial will cover um, how to set up a 40 client um, with two WAN connections. So if you've got two separate internet providers, you can set it up so that um, your VPN can dial on both um, ISP connections. So if one goes down, you should still be able to have VPN users active on your uh, firewall and they can still access their uh, the systems. So what I'll do is I'll quickly show you some of the settings here on the uh, firewall. So if I go into firewall policy, you can see I have a rule here. Now this is a lab environment so I have just allowed everything from my trust zone to untrust. So from my LAN out to the internet I'm allowing all services. It's not really relevant to this uh, tutorial, but that's just to explain that one. And more importantly, VPN 1 and VPN 2, they're both allowed into the trust zone. So these two VPN um, are different VPN profiles, which I'll cover in a wee second. But the, the main thing here is to show that the VPN, both VPN profiles have the same rules applying. So in this case, we allow all services into our uh, local network and that's for both VPNs. Now under um, VPN, IPsec tunnels, what we have here is two separate VPN profiles. Now these VPN profiles are obviously bound to WAN1 and WAN2 and that's pretty much the major difference between them. Um, Nearly all of the settings are the exact same, apart from the interface and the client IP address range. So I'll just quickly show you the settings I'm using in this uh, tutorial. So Remote Gateways Dial-Up User is on my first WAN interface. Uh, a few settings here which may differ to your um, your settings in your, in your environment, which is totally fine. Client address range here, 172.16.5.1. 2.100 uh, a subnet mask which is fairly massive for a VPN but it's a lab environment so no worries LAN subnet is allowed to sorry the VPNs are allowed to access the company's LAN subnet which is fine NAT traversal and dead peer detection are enabled I've set up a pre-share key here uh, version 1 in aggressive mode uh, aggressive mode is required for dial-up VPNs because they have dynamic IP addresses. Phase 1 proposal is your encryption and your authentication. So um, in this example we're using DES, SHA-256. DES is not recommended. This is only a lab environment and it's a trial for to get. So it doesn't let me use AES mode, but DES is not recommended. So please use AES for your for your setup. Okay, so Diffy Hellman Group 14 and the client, uh, sorry, key lifetime of 28800. XOF is your user authentication settings here. Normally this will be your LDAP server, your Active Directory server, or your Radius server. In this case, it's a local firewall uh, group with one user there just for testing. Phase 2 here, we've got local address and remote address both of which set to 0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 and that's the recommended way for dial-up VPNs to work and again phase 2 is similar to phase 1 you set up your encryption and your authentication profile uh, replay detection, PFS, diffie hellman on 14 and your key life down there at 43200 and I'll quickly show you the VPN 2 here so the biggest difference here is it's bound to WAN2. 
as you see there and the other only difference here is client IP address range is starting from 101 up to 200 uh, if you remember on VPN 1 this was from 1 to 100 this is 101 to 200 and that's just to avoid some IP collisions and that is really the, the only difference between your profiles okay so right now go back to interfaces and we have both WAN 1 and WAN 2 are active and enabled so what we'll do and that is that's the ideal scenario we want both of them to be enabled what we'll do now open up the 40 client and we'll check the settings here for the client so if I edit my connection you can see here connection name which is VPN test so you can call it anything you anything you like here now the important bit here is your remote gateway and you can see here I've inserted both my WAN1 and my WAN2 IP address here uh, which match on the 40 gate that's the important part here pre-share key is needs to match what you've configured in the profiles so your pre-share key will be the same for your client VPN1 and VPN2 and it should be a secure random long uh, string of text or numbers or symbols and again just to quickly go through these um, these settings all match what we have on the 40 gate. We've got version 1, aggressive mode config, uh, IKE proposal, which is DES. Again, as I said before, please don't use that. Please use AES, 128 or above. Um, key life is the same. Key life down here for phase 2 is the same. And all these settings normally vary for your organization. So these, come, these are uh, irrelevant for this example. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll dial up the VPN. Click connect. And we'll just monitor what's happening on the firewall here. So you can see that's connected now and it's connected me to my first VPN profile, which is one one. One dial up connection. There we go. So you can see my IP address and things like that are, are all there. If we open up the 40 client, we can see that it's assigned me 172.16.5.1. Again, that's the client range under my first uh, profile, 172.16.5.1. Okay, what I'll do now is just to make sure that the VPN is working, is ping one of my servers. And you can see that's responding and it's working. So I am connected to the VPN and I can access my local network. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replicate a, what it would be like if your ISP failed. So what we'll do is we'll disconnect WAN1 from our VM. So in the VM settings, set the link to inactive and apply. And one one you can see now has went down, and the ping has stopped working. And then after a few seconds, the VPN will disconnect. As shown there, VPN is now down. And we'll give that a few seconds. And you can see there that the VPN has retried itself and it's realized that the primary gateway is down and it's now reconnected to the secondary gateway. I know this because if I refresh, you can see my new dial-up connection is against my second ISP connection, my WAN2 port. And I can ping my server on the LAN so I know that the VPN is working. And you can see one one is down and one two is up. And on the client here, you can see here it's given me an IP address of 172.16.5.101. Again in VPN2. That was the first IP address in the range, so that is another way of telling what profile you are connected to. 
So yeah, VPN one is down and two is up. So that's that's it filled over now. Um, we've lost about five or six pings on the, when the, the failover happened, which is not bad um, in the big scheme of things. Okay, what we'll do now, we'll restore one one. We'll bring that back online. Um, so when our face is up, it's now green. The VPN still appears to be down. That's because no one is connected to it. Uh, one one should be online. As shown there. Now because one two is still active and responding to the client, the VPN will still continue to use one two, unless you manually disconnect the VPN and reconnect it. So in this case, we are still connected to one two. Now what I'm going to do now. Uh, is the same thing. So I'm going to make one to fail by unplugging the network cable and refresh. And you can see there one two is now showing as offline. And the ping is now failing to connect to the server. And we'll give that a few seconds to see how that behaves. And again, it's connected back to the VPN, and the ping has now restored to its normal operation. So I'll just refresh again to show you that 1.2 is offline. And if I go to VPN tunnels, you can see now VPN 1 has came online, showing my dial-up connection. And in VPN 2, my 1.2 is offline. It still shows uh, the old connection, but that does disappear after uh, a few seconds. So just ignore that. There's, uh, the new connection is back onto my primary uh, WAN connection. And again, if I open up here, you can see it's put me back onto my first IP ad address range, 172.16.5.1, which is there. And just to finish off this video, what I'm going to do is bring that back online, fail 1.1. So now one one's down, one two's up. Request timed out on the ping over on the client side. VPN's down. And after about five or six pings there, the uh, Forty client reconnects to the other gateway and the ping has resumed where it was. So it's now pinging my server. So in real life, your users would have maybe five to ten seconds of downtime there and it would automatically fail over. Um, in the event it doesn't automatically redial the connection, uh, your user will just need to put in their username and password, um, which they would normally do. Anyway, if the VPN goes down, the normal instinct is to put in your credentials and try again. So that's quite a natural thing for users to, to try and troubleshoot for themselves. Um, but in most cases, it will redial itself automatically and business as usual uh, will keep going. So hopefully this video has covered some of the points uh, when you're setting up a, a multi one forty client setup. Um, the key here is that you have two separate VPN profiles. Uh, one for each binding on your interfaces and um, with different client IP address ranges and all other settings should be the exact same um, like your pre-share key and your encryption settings and all that fun stuff and in firewall policy you just need to make sure that you have mirrored your VPN um, settings here so VPN 1 until my LAN allowed and VPN 2 into my LAN is also allowed so hopefully that's helped you set this up for your for your own environment. Um, this is my first YouTube video, so hopefully this has been not too bad. Uh, if you get any feedback or have any questions or queries that I can maybe help you with, please let me know in the comments section below. Um, if you don't mind giving me a like, that would be amazing. And if there's anything else, please give me a shout. Cheers, guys.